Okay, this is the final exam for Physics 103 4T from Fall 2010. In the first one, you're supposed to measure the diameter of the provided cylinder with the vernier caliper. This was a practical. Now, you put your cylinder in here where this nut is shown. And then you want to find, look first at the zeroth mark. It's between 2.4 and 2.5 right here. So I know that my first numbers are going to be a 2 and a 4 because it's between 2.4 and 2.5. And then I want to find the first occurrence where a tick mark on the bottom on the vernier scale lines up with a tick mark on the uh, on the top scale. So if I go down this way until I find two that line up, oh, looks like right here lines up. That means that my answer is going to, since it was on the seventh tick mark, that is 2.47. And then it's either a 0 or 5 at the end. It's a 0 because it's right on 7 and not between 7 and 8. So 2.470. Uh, could have taken some other answers. Uh, you might say that this, this tick mark lines up, which would be 2.475, or maybe even 2.480. Any of those would have been uh, appropriate. This one, you're supposed to determine the spring constant, provided spring. This was a practical. You're supposed to put certain masses on and measure the elongation. Let's say that you put these masses on, 0.1 kilograms, 0.2 Point three, point four. that would be 100, 200, 300, 400 grams. And then your elongation would be, uh, let's say, for example, if it came out to be this, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8, then you would plot that data. You would plot elongation versus mass, have some scatter in the data. You fit a best fit line. You find the slope of that line. And uh, you would find that the slope of that line would equal 2. Now, we want to use that slope in order to find the, uh, in order to find the spring constant. And I've given you Hooke's law, which says that F equals kx. My F is my gravitational force, so it's mg is equal to k. And I'm going to write x as elongation, because that's, that's what I've plotted here, is the elongation, which is our x displacement. So I, uh, I want to write this in terms of the equation of a line. Here I've plotted elongation and mass. Elongation is my y variable, and mass is my x variable. So I'm going to write it in that term, y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to write it in terms of elongation is equal to g over k times the mass. So this is my y variable. This is my x variable. The coefficient of the x variable is the slope. So my slope, which is 2, is equal to g over k. And then I solve that for k, and I get k is about 20 newton meters. 20, excuse me, 20 uh, newtons per meter, newtons per meter. All right, the following data was taken from a velocity versus displacement for a car at rest accelerating at a constant rate. Equation describing the relationship between these quantities is given. V squared is equal to 2ax. I ask you to plot V and x so that it's linear and interpret it appropriately to determine the value of the acceleration. In order to make this linear, if you plot V squared and x, not linear. Or excuse me, if you plot V and x, not linear. So you have to plot V squared and x. And that is a linear graph. Right? See, this is my y variable. This is my x variable. v squared is on the y-axis. x is on the x-axis. That gives me a linear relationship. And then I want to find the slope. Rise over run gives me the slope. Uh, for this particular data, the slope worked out to be about 44. That is plotting v squared versus x. Gives me a slope of 44. And that slope is equal to 2a. Because that's the function that defines the physical relationship that the data represents. So if I solve that for A, A is equal to 22 meters per second squared. Now, of course, there was some, um, some leeway in this, depending on how you draw your best fit line, but it should be approximately this answer. All right, draw the vector diagram with the resolved vectors for a plane traveling in a circular path. The figures as follows. Write the equations that follow from Newton's second law. So... Um, including the centripetal acceleration. So I have two forces. They're already labeled here. If I draw my vector diagrams, I have Ft here. That's my tension. And then my F weight. Didn't require you to draw that, but you can. This angle is theta. And then if I draw my, uh, my resolve vectors, this is going to be Ft sine of theta. 
and this is ft cosine theta. And then this is just the force weight. So I apply Newton's second law. I can come up with two equations. First, the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to ft sine of theta minus fw. And since the ex that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction, but since the acceleration in the y direction is zero, this is equal to zero. Further, on the x-axis, I only have ft cosine theta. And that's equal to mv squared over r. I'm going to leave the negative off here. I know that ft cosine theta is in the negative direction, but that actually changes as it goes around. Sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it off for now. The sum of the forces in the x direction is just ft cosine theta. That's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. But the acceleration in the x direction is v squared over r. That's my centripetal acceleration. Now, this next question follows. I want you to determine the period of the motion. Several steps in this. All right, but first, the length of the string is 1 meter. That's this distance, and this distance is 0.4 meters. If I draw that as a triangle, a right triangle as it is, I get 1 meter, 0.4 meters. I want to know what is this angle theta. So the angle theta is the inverse cosine of adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 0.4 over 1 which gives me an angle of 66 degrees. You need that in order to solve the problem. All right, now I want to figure out what is the period. The period is related to the linear velocity, so I need to find out what is the linear velocity, but I don't know what the tension force is. So my first step is to use this of Newton's second law's equations in order to find the tension. So if I solve that equation, I have Ft is equal to Fw over sine of theta. That's mg over sine of theta. m is uh, given. It's 0.5 kilograms times 9.8 divided by the sine of 66. So that gives me my tension force, which is uh, 12 newtons. Now that I have my tension, I can come over here, and I want to solve this equation for v. Let's solve this equation for v. So if I solve it for v, just doing the algebra, it's the square root of ft cosine theta r. You might want to do the algebra on your own. Divided by m, the square root of all of that. All right, so that's the square root of 12 cosine of 66 times 0.4, that's my r that was given, divided by the mass, which is 0.5. Square root of all of that is 2.0 meters per second. So that's how fast the ball is traveling in a linear sense. And I want to know the period. Well, the period is equal to the uh, diameter 2 pi r over the speed. This comes about because, uh, you know, the speed is distance over time. So the speed is 2 pi r over time, the circumference over the time. So uh, I have 2 pi r over v. Now I can put in the values 2 pi times 0.4 over v, which I just found, which is 2 meters per second. So that gives me 1.3 seconds. And that's the answer. This figure shows a system balance at the center of mass of the ruler. Uh, on the left, an object of no unknown mass is attached with a lever clamp whose mass is 20 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. The mass of this is the mass unknown plus 20 grams, because that's the mass of the clamp. The mass is at a distance of 40 centimeters from the balance point. So that R1 is 40. On the right, some known masses are hanging on a mass of 50 grams. These masses have a mass of 25 grams and are attached by a lever clamp. So my total mass over here is 50 grams, that's the hanger, plus 25 grams, that's the masses on the hanger, plus 20 grams, which is the clamp. So this is 95 grams. Now, the known mass is 30 centimeters, so this is 30 centimeters. I want to know what is the unknown mass. So I can say that the torques on the left-hand side are equal to the torques on the right-hand side, uh, but as we did in class, the G value just cancels out. So I just say mass unknown plus 20 
grams times 40 centimeters is equal to 95 times 30. 95 grams times 30 centimeters. And then I solve for the, the uh, unknown mass. And the unknown mass, I get 20 plus mass of the unknown is equal to uh, 71 grams. So the mass of the unknown then is 51 grams. All right, a cylinder has a diameter. Actually, in class, I changed this to a sphere. It has a diameter of 3.2 centimeters. The mass of the, the sphere is 43 grams. What is the density? What well, density is just mass over volume. Mass over volume. The mass is given is 43 grams. But I asked for the answer in kilograms per cubic meter, so it's 0.043 kilograms. And uh, divided by the volume, and I give you the volume for a sphere there, it's 4 thirds pi times the radius cube. The diameter is given, so that's 3.2 over 2 cubed. If I put that in, I get 2,500 kilograms per cubic meter. Object has a mass of 0.02 kilograms, a density of 1,200. What is the apparent weight of an object when it's submerged in water whose density is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter? So if I have an object, it's floating or submerged in water. It has some weight. That's its actual weight. And then it has some upward buoyant force. The apparent weight is just the actual weight minus the buoyant force. How heavy, how heavy do you feel when you're in the water? We feel lighter when we're in a swimming pool. That's our apparent weight. So I need to figure out what is the buoyant force. The buoyant force, this equation is given on the back, uh, is the density of the fluid times the volume of the object times g. This is the weight of the displaced fluid, the weight of the displaced fluid. So let's see, the volume of the object is not given, but I have its mass and its density. All right, so I can figure out what is the volume. It's just the mass over the density. That is uh, 0.02 over 1,200. Gives me 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. That's in cubic meters. So over here, I get the density of the fluid. We're using water, so it's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The volume of the object, which is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 cubic meters, times g, which is 9.8. So my buoyant force has a value of 0.17 newtons. 0.17 newtons. So my apparent weight is equal to the actual weight minus the buoyant force. The actual weight is 0.02 kilograms times 9.8 minus 0.17 newtons. And that gives me 0.03 newtons. That's my apparent weight. That's how heavy it feels. And then number 9, 100 grams of water, specific heat of 1. The initial temperature of 20 degrees Celsius is mixed with 500 grams. So here's my water over here. I have 100 grams of it. The specific heat is equal to 1 calorie per gram per degree Celsius. And my initial temperature is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. And then I have some shot. Over here, I have 500 grams of it. That's my mass. The specific heat, I don't know. I want to find that out. And the initial temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. I put them together. They come to an equilibrium temperature, and that final temperature for both is 40 degrees Celsius. Now, I want to know what is the specific heat of the metal, just like we did in lab. So, uh, I know that heat transfer, the heat transferred is MC delta T. That's the amount of heat transferred in order to raise the mass of a certain material with a certain specific heat by a certain temperature. All right, I also know that in a closed system, which this is, like in, a, in an isolated or an insulated system, as we did in lab, that the sum of the heats 
the sum of the heat transfer is zero because no heat enters or leaves the system. So within the system, heat was transferred to the metal, to the water, but no heat was lost. So I can say that the, the heat transfer to the water plus the heat lost by the shot is equal to zero. And then I just have to put in my numbers. Q is MC delta T. That is 100 grams of water times one calorie gram degree Celsius for the specific heat. And then the change in temperature is 40 minus 20. So the water increases in temperature by 20 degrees Celsius plus 500 grams specific heat, which we want to know. And this is 40 minus 100 for the change in temperature. See, it's a negative number. That's equal to zero. If we solve this for C, we find that C is equal to 0 0.067. That's in calories per gram per degree Celsius. 0 0.067 is the answer. All right, just a couple more. This is uh, describing the motion of the particles at A, B, and C in this figure. In part A is the position positive, negative, or zero. The position here is below x equals zero, so it's negative. Is the velocity positive, negative, or zero? We want to look at the slope. It's positive, so we have a positive velocity. Is the speed increasing, decreasing, or remaining constant? The this, this slope is decreasing at this point. It's big here, small here, so it's decreasing. Is the acceleration positive, negative, or zero? Since the velocity is positive and the speed is decreasing, the acceleration has to be opposite the velocity, so it's negative. Particle B, the position is negative. The velocity is zero because the slope there is flat, is zero. Uh, so the speed is constant because that slope isn't changing. And the acceleration then is zero because the speed is constant. The particle C, it's at a positive position. The velocity, the slope here is positive, so the velocity is positive. The speed, the slope, is increasing drastically, actually. So the speed is increasing. And then the acceleration, since the speed is increasing, the acceleration must be in the same direction as the velocity, so the acceleration is positive. Final one, determine the period. The period is the time between successive peaks. This is uh, from 3 to 6. So t is equal to 3 seconds. You could do it here or anywhere, just between two successive peaks. And then the, uh, the radius is half of this distance. This distance from here to here is 4 meters. So the radius is 4 meters over 2, which is 2 meters. That's also the distance from here to here, two meters on the y-axis. Those were the equations that you had.